Modern chemistry involves laboratory workers performing complex reactions involving larger numbers of chemicals in pursuing the next scientific breakthrough. While these pursuits are noble, they are not without risk. Laboratory exposure to chemicals is insidious with long-term health effects that may not manifest themselves for years. The US Occupational Safety and Health Administration has disclosed actuarial figures that show that laboratory personnel have a lifespan 10 years shorter than the normal average. Therefore, it is important that laboratory workers learn to protect themselves from chemical exposure. This video aims to inform and educate fume hood users with useful theory and knowledge on safety operations. Fume hoods are important safety devices which protect laboratory personnel from exposure to volatile chemicals. A properly maintained fume hood exhausts hazardous fumes, dusts and mists for safe and practical dispersal to the atmosphere. Hoods also serve as physical barriers between reactions and the laboratory, therefore offering a measure of protection against spills, runaway reactions and fires. Fume hoods should be suitably sited to ensure maximum containment. Locate hoods to avoid cross currents at the hood face due to pedestrian traffic, doors and supply air diffusers. Sufficient laboratory supply air must be available to allow hoods to operate at their specified face velocities. The following experiment illustrates how cross currents caused by pedestrians can disrupt hood airflow. Hoods should be placed in close proximity to safety equipment, such as emergency water showers, in case of any emergency. Prior to starting work in a hood, evaluate the hazards and consult with the laboratory safety officer to develop appropriate safety protocols and hygiene plans. Adequate planning and preparation is the key. The hood user should know the chemical hygiene plan or standard operating procedure of the hood. Procedures should be designed so that safety can be ensured whenever hazardous materials might be released. The following questions may be useful to facilitate this process. What are the characteristics of the hazards associated with the procedure? Do special precautions need to be taken? What is the contingency plan? Will the hoods and systems used provide adequate protection? Is the correct hood being used for the experiment? Will the equipment and apparatus fit comfortably in the hood without obstructing the airflow? Can the reaction be carried out with less hazardous or less volatile chemicals? Can reaction processes be modified to improve safety and reduce losses to the environment? Various types of hoods exist for different applications. Constant air volume, also known as bypass. Variable air volume. Auxiliary air. Low constant volume and high performance low flow refer to hood airflow types. These should not be confused with the types of hoods discussed next. General purpose bench top fume hoods are suitable for a wide variety of common reactions. Most hoods fall into this category. Perchloric acid reacts violently with organic materials. Dried perchloric acid is also highly explosive. Therefore, Perchloric fume hoods require built-in water washdown systems in order to prevent perchlorate salt deposits. Interior liners are made of acid-resistant materials like stainless steel. Interior corners are coved to aid in cleaning. All procedures that use perchloric acid must be confined to a perchloric fume hood to prevent dangerous reactions with other chemicals. Radioisotope fume hoods are constructed specifically 
to protect users from radioactive materials. They have specially constructed worktops to withstand the weight of lead shielding plates and may also have lead laced sashes. Interiors are made up of stainless steel with coved corners to aid in decontamination. Acid digestion fume hoods have special liners manufactured of acid resistant materials such as unplasticized PVC. For acid digestion applications involving high surface temperatures, other materials such as PVDF may be used. Sashes may be made of polycarbonate to resist hydrofluoric acid etching. Floor mounted fume hoods are used for applications which require large apparatus. As the name implies, these hoods are floor mounted without any work surface. This facilitates the transfer of equipment and materials into and out from the hood. Floor mounted hoods are sometimes referred to, although wrongly, as walk in fume hoods. Ductless fume hoods utilize activated carbon filtration to adsorb chemical vapors and fumes. These hoods recirculate air to the laboratory and are growing in popularity because of energy savings and the green movement. Biological safety cabinets, laminar flow clean benches, pharmacy isolators and glove boxes are sometimes mistaken for fume hoods. These devices utilize particulate filters which do not remove chemical vapors. With specific rare exceptions they should not be used for work involving chemicals. Always ensure you are using the correct type of hood for your specific application. Fume hood sashes are often overlooked. When used properly, they can greatly improve hood performance and operator safety. Hoods are equipped with one of three types of sashes, vertical, horizontal or combination vertical and horizontal. Vertical sashes provide the greatest overall access and are the most common. Horizontal sashes provide the best access to the top interior of the hood but do not provide access to the entire width at the same time. However, they can be positioned as a body shield to protect the operator in case of runaway reactions while enabling access through the sides. Combination sashes combine horizontal sash panes in a vertical rising frame. As such, they offer the advantages of both vertical and horizontal sashes. For this reason, we recommend all new fume hoods be specified with combination sashes. Regardless of the type of sash, the golden rule is to keep the sash closed as far as possible. Hood airflow is generally stronger with the sash lowered and less susceptible to external airflow disturbances. A closed sash also serves as a physical barrier protecting the user from runaway reactions. Today, many hoods are configured for restricted sash operation in order to lower ventilation and energy costs be sure to determine the maximum sash operating height or opening for your hood. Hoods with vertical sashes configured for restricted sash operation typically have a sash lock or label indicating the maximum operating height. Only raise the hood sash above the maximum operating height for setup. Some hoods are also equipped with a creep down feature to prevent the user from accidentally leaving the sash open above the operating height. If your hood is equipped with a horizontal or combination sash, position the horizontal sash panes in between you and the reaction. This way the sash serves as a body shield. The hood may be accessed via the sides if necessary. If a combination sash is installed, do not open the vertical and horizontal sashes simultaneously. Most hoods are designed for either the vertical or horizontal sash to be opened at any time, but not both. <music> New 
never remove airfoils or baffles, as they are designed to aid airflow in the hood. Airfoils prevent vortices at critical entry surfaces. For example, without an airfoil installed at the front edge of the work surface, airflow does not sweep the work surface consistently. This can lead to loss of containment. Some high-performance low-flow fume hoods are equipped with turning vanes at the sides and on the lower edge of the sash. These vanes also prevent vortices from forming at these critical entry surfaces. Baffles are used to shape and improve the flow of air inside the fume hood. This experiment with a smoke source illustrates how airflow in the hood is turbulent without the baffles installed. With the baffles installed, residence time decreases greatly. Ensure the exhaust is operating before beginning work. Check the baffles for obstructions. If the hood is fitted with an airflow monitor, check the monitor's status. Even while working, be alert to changes in airflow. Use appropriate personal protective equipment, such as splash goggles and gloves. This enhances safety in case of catastrophic spills, runaway reactions or fire. Work should be conducted as far into the hood as possible. The minimum guideline is 15 centimeters or 6 inches into the hood. This experiment demonstrates how apparatus placed too close to the front of the hood disrupts airflow. Hoods with apparatus placed close to the front are also more susceptible to external airflow disturbances. Work with slow, deliberate movements to minimize airflow disturbances. This experiment illustrates how working with fast, sudden movements can disrupt hood airflow. If a potential for violent physical reaction exists, a secondary blast shield should be utilized. If the hood is fitted with a horizontal or combination sash, the sash may also be positioned to act as a blast shield. When using large apparatus inside the hood, place the equipment on blocks, when safe and practical, to allow airflow beneath it. Ensure that equipment and materials do not block the baffle vents in the back of the hood. Do not use the hood as a storage area. Items can block airflow and interfere with containment. This experiment illustrates how airflow turbulence in the hood increases significantly when the interior is overloaded with items. Do not use the fume hood as a waste disposal mechanism Proper disposal of waste and code compliance should be practiced. Do not leave uncapped bottles of reagents in a hood. Although a hood is used to exhaust fumes out of the laboratory, minimizing the amount of evaporation and fuming is desirable for the environment and operator safety. If performance is suspected or an airflow alarm is triggered, if installed, terminate usage and close the sash completely. Inform your laboratory manager and safety officer immediately. Do not use perchloric acid in a fume hood unless it has been specially designed for this purpose. Explosive perchlorate salts could accumulate in the exhaust system without precautionary washdown. Items contaminated with chemicals should be removed from the hood only after decontamination to avoid releasing contaminants into the laboratory. Fume hoods should be certified at least annually to ensure that they are operating safely. Typical tests include face velocity measurements, smoke tests and tracer gas containment. Tracer gas containment tests are especially crucial as studies have shown that face velocity is not a good predictor of fume hood leakage. In fact, these same studies have shown that approximately a third of fume hoods in use in the US fail to meet the safety criteria specified in ANSI Z9.5. Laboratory exposure to chemicals is insidious 
with long-term health effects that may not manifest themselves for years. Remember, fume hoods are not magic boxes. They are simply containment tools intended to augment well-executed operations. We hope you've enjoyed your training with ESCO.